So friends, do we think Donald Trump will ever really be sentenced on those 34 felony convictions handed down by the jury in his New York criminal case? Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, as you well know, Donald Trump is pending sentencing on 34 guilty verdicts in New York State Court for criminally falsifying business records to cover up hush money payments to cheat in the 2016 presidential election. Now, sentencing is still scheduled for November 26th and we were supposed to get an important ruling from the presiding judge, Judge Juan Mershon, on November 12th, but the judge pushed that ruling down the road for one week. Let's start with the new reporting. This from The Hill. Headline, Judge Delays Trump Immunity Decision in New York Hush Money Case. Let me just fix that headline. Judge delays Trump immunity decision in New York election interference case. Fixed it. That article begins. A New York judge delayed a Tuesday decision on whether President-elect Trump's conviction can withstand the Supreme Court's presidential immunity ruling following his election victory last week. Judge Juan Mershon agreed to freeze the case until November 19, newly public court records show, enabling prosecutors to respond to Trump's demand that the case be dismissed entirely now that he is president-elect. Trump's sentencing, which would be the first of any former president, is scheduled for November 26. He was convicted on 34 felony counts of falsifying business records in connection with a hush money payment made to porn actor Stormy Daniels ahead of the 2016 election to conceal the affair, which he denies. Mershon was slated to rule Tuesday on whether Trump's guilty verdict must be wiped, dismissed, under the Supreme Court's presidential immunity decision, which was handed down after the trial. The high court, the Supreme Court, held that former presidents enjoy absolute immunity from criminal prosecution for exercising core constitutional powers and at least presumptive immunity for other official acts. Unofficial conduct can be prosecuted, but the jury cannot question the motivation behind a presidential decision, the court said. So friends, let's briefly look at the court filings to see why Judge Mershand kicked his ruling down the road for a week. He was supposed to rule on whether Trump's convictions must be thrown out because of the Supreme Court's presidential immunity ruling. He was going to rule on November 12th. Now he's put it off until November 19th. Here are the communications between the prosecutors, Trump's defense attorney, and Judge Mershon, which under the rules of New York they're allowed to do in email traffic. So here is some of that email traffic. This from the prosecutors. Dear Justice Mershon, we are writing to advise the court that on Friday, defendant Trump asked the people to agree to a stay or a pause of these proceedings in order to provide time to review and consider a number of arguments based on the impact of the presidential election, defendant Trump's forthcoming certification as president-elect on January 6th and his inauguration on January 20. The people, meaning the prosecutors, agree that these are unprecedented circumstances and that any further steps in this proceeding should appropriately balance the competing interests of, one, a jury verdict of guilt following a trial that has the presumption of regularity as balanced against, two, the office of the president. 
Accordingly, the people, the prosecutors, respectfully request that the court adjourn the upcoming scheduled dates to afford the people, the prosecutors, time to assess these recent developments and set November 19th, 2024 as a deadline for the prosecutors to advise the court regarding our view of appropriate steps going forward. And I'm not going to read Donald Trump's lawyers reply to that email in its entirety, but essentially here is what they say. They say that the stay, meaning the pause in the case, and dismissal of the guilty verdicts are necessary to avoid unconstitutional impediments to President Trump's ability to govern. That's right, friends. Donald Trump's lawyers argued to Judge Mershon that he has to dismiss the case so as to avoid unconstitutional impediments to Donald Trump's ability to govern. Okay, so this is the president-elect, Donald Trump, who said he'll be a dictator on day one, he'll terminate the Constitution, he'll use the military against his political opponents and enemies, and his lawyers say, <laughs> you have to dismiss this case, Judge Mershon, so as to not unconstitutionally interfere with Donald Trump's ability to govern. Okay, you don't want to unconstitutionally interfere with all of the unconstitutional things Donald Trump promised he would do when he was governing. Friends, we're living in the legal upside down. Still, let's talk about the possible paths moving forward regarding this issue, whether Judge Mershon will dismiss the case or whether he will go to sentencing. So here are the different paths, here are the different possibilities. One, Judge Mershon dismisses the case because he says, well, I think the Supreme Court presidential immunity ruling requires me to throw out his 34 guilty verdicts. I think that unlikely because Donald Trump committed most of these crimes and this conduct when he wasn't even president. So I think Judge Mershon will deny the motion to dismiss. Or he could say, well, now I have to dismiss it because he's the president-elect. And based on the supremacy clause that says, well, if state laws contradict or are inconsistent with federal laws, the federal law wins and a, a sitting president cannot be prosecuted while in office, at least that's Department of Justice policy. So I'm going to go ahead and dismiss it, not because of presidential immunity, but because of a supremacy clause claim. I also think that unlikely. So let's move to the next tier. Judge Mershon denies all motions to dismiss and says, I'm prepared to go to sentencing, but Donald Trump's lawyers immediately appeal it. And that stops or stays or pauses the case while it makes its way up and down the appellate courts, maybe the state courts and the federal courts. We'll talk more about that in the future. And then the case just sort of awaits final appellate decision. Or Judge Mershon can say, I deny your motion and I'm prepared to go to sentencing. I understand you want to appeal and you have every right to appeal, but I'm going to sentence you. I'm going to stay execution of the sentence, which is fairly common in the practice of criminal law, meaning I'm going to tell you what your sentence is, but I'm going to pause it while you go ahead and, you know, chase your appeals in both state court and federal court. Um, but my sentence will be there waiting for you at the resolution of your appeals and maybe at the end of your next presidential term. He could do that. I think that less likely because I think once he denies uh, the motions to dismiss, he'll probably just stop dead in his judicial tracks and let the appeal take place. Or here is the final option, and it's a lawful option. Uh, I'm not sure how likely it is, but Judge Mershon can say, okay, uh, I deny your motion to dismiss. Go ahead and appeal it. I will keep the case on ice. I'll basically put it in hibernation until the end of your presidency. And when you leave the presidency, then 
we will take it out of hibernation, we will move forward, and we will sentence you. Of course, that depends on what the appellate courts, both state and federal, end up doing with the case. But that's another possibility. So as I see it, those are the different possibilities. I can't even say which one is a likelihood at this point, but those are the different possibilities confronting Judge Mershon as he tries to move through these uncharted waters. And what I hope is that whatever decision Judge Mershon makes is one that honors the very notion of somebody being held accountable for his crimes, especially crimes that were transparently designed to try to cheat in a presidential election. Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.